Let's talk about characters. The best fighting games consist of rosters of characters that are all unique and interesting to play as. While clone characters are definitely a thing that exists, the best games find ways to still differentiate these characters in order to make them stand out. For example, Ryu is a stoic, honor-bound man whose sole purpose in life is to travel the world, finding an opponent who will test his skills. Whereas Ken is a hot-headed family man. He's someone who fights more for the thrill of it and the fun and likes to show off the cool things that he's while these attributes aren't very well expressed in their debut game, or even the one that everyone actually liked playing, in later iterations, the designers over at Capcom found ways to better show these differences. In Street Fighter 3, basically every one of Ryu's supers is an extremely powerful version of one of his moves, Shinku Hadouken, Shinku Shoryuken, and Denji Hadouken. These show that Ryu is putting all of his power into one big attack in order to defeat the enemy. Nice, clean, efficient, and powerful. Whereas, Ken has his third super art in which he completely styles upon the opponent for a lot of damage. This shows that the designers clearly wanted to differentiate these characters based on their personality. It's further proven by the fact that in every subsequent Street Fighter game, Ryu and Ken are given different supers which adhere to this powerful and effective versus stylish and super cool super. If it isn't obvious enough, just by these two characters, a character's actual characteristics can greatly affect what moves they are able to use and how these moves are displayed and it's found across every fighting game in subtle and obvious ways. So I thought it would be fun to point at some of these characters and examine why they have certain moves and how it adds to their character. We already talked about Street Fighter, so let's take a look at another one of the biggest series in the genre with Tekken. Tekken shows this through, um... Through, uh, has the reaction stuff he's through the character like, struggle when he's they, a vegan, which that, you see this one DJ here, wrestler, but this one there here does is that, um, good boy. Miguel! Uh, Actually, Miguel is very interesting. Tekken 7 has a lot of characters who all represent different styles of combat, from the grounded in reality to the slightly eccentric to the, um, whatever the fuck Yoshi's doing over there. But Miguel is special as he doesn't have any form of formal combat training, aka he has no idea how to fight. While he still has universal tools such as an orbital and a magic four, a lot of his moves involve him throwing a lot of his body weight behind the attacks and swinging wildly. One of his best counter hit options, back one, is literally him giving you an elaborate bitch slap that forces you to stagger. While he's still strong enough to throw a punch, his lack of training means that he isn't able to access more advanced moves, and even his grabs don't put him in the most advantageous state. This doesn't mean Miguel's a bad character though, his lack of formal training doesn't stop him from putting out ridiculous amount of pressure and allows him to have some of the funniest looking moves in the game. You just straight up shove them bro! It's like watching two lads in a night out in Leeds if they could actually move their body. This isn't a type of character that's exclusive to Tekken though. Happy Chaos is a being that's only been in the minds of characters up until recently. A creature that has forever been a splintered part of a whole picture. They exist, and yet they don't exist. By being an anomaly that only theoretically exists, you don't have much time to learn how to throw a proper punch. Happy Chaos has never been in a fist fight, so their normals are more akin to them flailing their limbs instead of actually attacking you. They do have the best success in the game though. Gilly Gear has a lot of things like this for different characters as well. May's design is made to intentionally make her look small, the baggy clothes, the big hat, and of course the very large anchor. Due to the big anchor, her normals are effective as when she swings that thing, then obviously it's gonna take up a lot of space. Moves like Jumping Heavy Slash really show this, having hitboxes that are pretty much bigger than May, don't fact check that, which is an added side effect of making her look small. But what about characters that have their specials and kits drastically changed for lore reasons? Well, let me introduce you to Slayer and Nagoriyuki. Both of these characters are Nightwalkers, which are basically just extremely powerful vampire-like characters that can rock your shit in two seconds flat. Both of these characters have moves that consume blood and aren't able to die, so when they're defeated, they pull the best losing pose in the game. However, if you ask anyone who's played both Slayer and Nago, you'll find that they feel extremely different to play. Nago wasn't always a Nightwalker, meaning that he's still pretty new to the whole being a mortal and drinking blood kind of thing. Well, relatively. Because of this, while he does show great uses of his power, he tends to overdo it a lot. This causes him to enter Blood Rage, where he becomes uncontrollable, filling his mind with nothing but the thought of getting that nice, sweet 
Kool-Aid. In game, this is represented by his blood gauge. Nago is able to cancel special moves into other special moves, known as special to special cancelling, which is unique to him in the cast. This allows him to have devastating offense, amazing defense, and combos that take over two thirds of your health bar. Every special move Nago uses causes his blood gauge to rise. The more full the blood gauge is, the longer Nago's normals are. Once his blood gauge is completely full, he enters blood rage, where he is no longer able to do any special moves, his normals become extremely long, and he loses health until his blood gauge is empty. This is able to effectively put the player into the mind of Nago. You're able to use these extremely powerful moves, however, you have to forcefully show some restraint, as using them too much will probably cost you the entire game. You have to wander the fine line, using this gift in order to defeat your foes, but not abusing it, as you may fall to greed and do harm to yourself. Now, Slayer uses his Nightwalker abilities to fuck with you. We've talked about Slayer before on the channel, but we're revisiting him because I can't get enough of this cocky motherfucker. Put him in strive already, Daisuke! Please! Slayer has been a Nightwalker for an extremely long time, so he's had a lot of time to master his craft and game power. He's become so powerful at this point that if he was to actually go all out in a fight, it probably wouldn't even be close. So, how do you add a character like this to a fighting game? Well, you make the character that plays control hold back, obviously. We've already talked about how this is apparent in his animation before in the power video. However, something I forgot to mention in that video is how the game actually forces you to hold back through removing a universal mechanic. Slayer can't use Gatlings. If you don't know, Guilty Gear has a system called Gatling, in which weaker moves are able to be cancelled into stronger moves. So punches can go to kicks, kicks can go to slash, slash can go to heavy slash, you get it. This allows players to be able to still do damage with a character, even if it's their first time playing by lowering the skill floor for basic combos. Slayer not having access to the Gatling system not only makes Slayer players master a harder link-based combo system, where the player has to make sure the style of the next move is faster than what it takes for the enemy to recover, but it also puts Slayer, the character, in a disadvantageous position. He is literally forcing himself to go for more difficult moves and letting his opponent take longer to recover from a hit instead Instead of just going all out, he's basically doing the fighting game equivalent of putting one hand behind his back while he fights you. The way that characters are designed can greatly affect what tools they have at their disposal. A character's kit is as just an interesting way to express traits about themselves as animations, voice line, and actual design are. Ah crap, this video isn't long enough as I wanted. Uh, fuck it, lightning round! Potemkin and Zangief are very large and slow to sell the weight of their attacks and give the reason for the amount of damage that they're doing. Giovanna is a very simple kit to emphasize how blunt she is and how she just wants to deal with problems quickly so she can move on to something else. Tina and Adult Gohan share similar moves, but Adult Gohan has a level up mechanic on his super and more moves showing despite the fact that he is stagnated in power, he's a smart fighter able to use his tool effectively to beat the opponent. Juri likes to toy with her opponent, so giving her a storm mechanic lets the opponent see what she's going to do to them next. Also, her sadistic nature attracts masochists and that's why she's loaded. Julia has a phase of a luchador, so to honor that, she retains a lot of her command grabs that makes her opponents up with strike throws. She's also a vegan, which adds to her kit by, um, you know, I don't know about this one, honestly. Kuma trained with Heihachi, so most of his moves are him trying to mimic Heihachi to the best of his abilities, and he fails a lot because he's short arms and he's a stupid bear. Bob is extremely fast despite his weight because he underwent a special diet so that he could keep up with his speed from when he was smaller, but be able to have literally more weight behind his attacks so he can keep up with his stronger opponents. This is contrasted to Birdie, who is now fat because Capcom hates fat people. Due to Gold Lewis not believing in aliens, he simply tries to use a coffin as a mate instead of relying on the creature inside, because it's not real, trust me. Kami is able to do spiral arrows because she's British. Beowulf is able to hit you with a chair because he's a good boy. Inu gets a dash fly because she's a witch, and that's what witches do. They don't run, they fly! Valentine kills you because she's a nurse who's bad at her job. Faust kills you because he's a doctor who's bad at his job. That was able to control Eddie as he gave up a part of himself so that he could control the beast until it inevitably consumed him and he died in between the events of the first and second Gilly game. Later being resurrected in exile with no feelings apart from those towards Gilly, which is why he hangs around her and tries to protect her at all costs. This leads to the question of what does it mean to a human and what would you be willing to give up in order to be near the one you love? Broly can command grab you because he's angry. 